Recording. Okay. Good deal. Fruit snacks. Those are delicious fruit snacks. Here, here's a story about those fruit snacks. Mr. Van Holy um, dropped those off for you for the uh, the stand-up comedy night we had, but then Doug brought in like a ton of candy, so they ended up in my office. There were like 70 in that thing, 80. I think I ate like 50 of them. Okay, <laughs> phenomenal. That's a lot of vitamin C, 100% per package. Sweet. It was a lot of sugar, yeah. No, I'm good, thanks. Yeah, but it's pretty awesome when you get to that juice in the middle. All right. Good. All right. Tonight we're talking about words. Words. Okay, word world. Word world is sweet because our world, wow. Our world really is a word world, right? Words. Now, it'd be sweet if, like, I walked around and I was made out of a B-R-A-D. Okay, but I'm, I'm not. But, but, um, but we really do live in a word world, and I think it's becoming an increasingly more wordy, wordy world, right? Texting. Internet. I mean, we, we're really surrounded by words. TV, we listen to, to words all the time on our iPods, okay? Words are really everywhere we go, okay? So that's why the night is titled Word World. Word World. Man, that's hard. Verbose. More verbiage. All right. Um, red light, green light is awesome because the word stop and go really means something, right? Okay, so, so what I want to talk about tonight is this idea that, that words really do mean something, okay? Even though all the time we're saying things like, oh, those are just words, or I didn't really mean that. Oh, it was just a text message. And then you've, you've got the old, like, recess grade you know, elementary school thing. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Um, but, but words really mean something, which is why we have to come up with all these lame excuses to justify our language. Oh, it was just a text message. I didn't really mean that. Okay, or we have to come up with the silly little rhyme to deflect the pain of words. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Words will kill my soul, okay? Um, <laughs> for real. For real. Um, we're going to talk about two, two lines from the Gospel of John tonight um, that will kind of be interwoven. Uh, the first is the word, the word was made flesh. The word was made flesh, and the second, the light shines in the darkness. The word was made flesh, the light shines in the darkness. So we're going to talk about the word being made flesh, this connection between words and flesh and reality. Okay, real life, they have meaning. Words describe reality. Words name reality. They explain reality. There's this really awesome, powerful interconnection between words and flesh. Three examples from my life. I could have provided a lot more, but um, I hope these illustrate the point of words and flesh. My senior year in high school, football. Yeah, I played football. If you didn't know that. Okay. Um, wide receiver. And uh, I did die a lot. I got just destroyed all the time. Um, but I tried hard. Uh, so my, my senior year, um, we, we were awful, okay? All the years before that, we were awesome. And this year, we were awful. And <laughs> we were playing a game. I made a bad play. How many of you made a bad play, and it cost your team? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. More than half the room, probably, right? So I was that guy that game. I made the bad play, okay? And 
I don't know that it necessarily cost us the game, but it was a pretty big play. After the game, one of the assistant coaches walked in to the locker room and got in my face, okay, and said some not nice things to me <laughs> about my worth as a human being and a football player. <laughs> and no joke though, those words that he said when he was looking me in the eye changed my life, okay? Those lies that he was speaking to me really changed the way I looked at myself. And I'm still working to overcome the hurt from that moment in that locker room. I'll never forget it, okay? Sticks and stones may break my bones. Yeah, right, okay? Words really hurt. They really change our lives, okay? Another example, my wedding vows. This is a much happier note, right? <laughs> um, you, I, Brad, take you, Katie. I, Brad, take you, Katie, for my lawful wife, okay? And, and those words changed my flesh, right? They changed who I was. When I said those words, when I named our love and, and committed my life to her, that changed my life. Those words that I spoke on that altar right over there changed my life on December 27th, 2008. <laughs> okay. uh, I don't know the time. My birthday is on the 27th. Chris Stubbs' birthday is on the 27th. Awesome. All right. So the last, the last example, um, two weeks ago tomorrow will be our, our second baby's two-week birthday. Okay. Her name's Lillian Grace. And there's this really profound moment as a parent that some of you, many of you will experience someday when you have that child and you're there with your spouse and the first word really that you speak to that child is the name of that child. And that child's just like so small and like scraggly and crying and you're like, you know, I was like Lillian, you know. And, and there's something really profound and powerful when you name the flesh that will stick with her forever. Okay, that name names who she is, her flesh. And what she does in her life will give so much meaning to that name, to that word, all right? This is really profound stuff. And, and I don't, like, we're really surrounded by words all the time. And we really make up really stupid excuses all the time. It was just a text message. I didn't really mean that. But words really mean something. They're really valuable. They're profoundly valuable because they're connected very tightly to reality. Um, we're going to tonight examine words in our lives. And what we want to do is invite Christ's light into our my word world, your word world, okay, how you use words. So here comes the second, the second half of the talk on Christ shining his light into my darkness, okay? Um, I was thinking about this the other day and was totally moved. I was reflecting on my time in high school, okay? I think this probably relates to most of you, okay? In many ways, it still relates to me, where I am now was that I desperately wanted to feel in and to feel accepted and to feel loved and affirmed, okay? And the way I went about that, because I didn't feel like I was actually good enough or worthy enough, was to just put on a lot of masks and act a different way in each setting I was in. I was trying to like be an awesome actor, basically. Maybe you can relate to that. Um, and I, I was just listing like the different masks I was wearing. Student mask, athlete mask, boyfriend mask, hang out with my friends and make fun of everyone else slash tell perverted jokes mask, good son mask. I mean, I could have gone on. But really in each of these, these different areas, I was a different person. 
And it was really hard as I've been preparing for this talk to like look back and see my fractured self, these little pieces of me in all these different areas, each different. Very hypocritical, you know, self-hypocritical. I don't know what you would call that. Um, and what I was thinking about that blew me away was that in each, each of those little like areas where I was acting, each map came its own vocabulary, its own set of lines to fit the bill. My words were really connected to my flesh, and my flesh was really broken. When I was with my friends, we would just be really shallow and talk about stupid stuff and, and like tell perverted jokes and objectify girls. And when I was on the football field, there was always this like, well, whatever happens on the field, I mean, it just stays on the field. You, you know, like whatever language you use in the locker room or on the field, like it just stays there. So everyone's pretty nasty, you know. Um, for the most part, these fragments of myself worked on a really superficial, superficial, shallow level in terms of being accepted and feeling in. Uh, the only times it didn't work was when I screwed up and like said the wrong lines in front of the wrong people. Like one time I was golfing. I'm terrible at golf. Okay, I'm golfing with my grandpa and my dad. <laughs> and I No, worse than slicing. Okay. I, I swung. I don't know what a shankopotamus is. <laughs> I swung, and, and I had this really terrible habit of, like, looking up. You know what I mean? You're supposed to just stare at the ball the whole time. So I, I'm like, <clears throat> and I nicked the ball. It just must have nicked. And it went backwards. <laughs> like, beeline for a bush. And I let some words come out of my mouth in front of my grandpa, <laughs> his innocent old grandpa, <laughs> thinking his little grandson is also, you know, in, innocent. And, I mean, I'll never forget the look and the scolding I got after that one. Okay. The, the other time that, that this whole, like, having a separate vocabulary for each mask and trying to feel in things um, became apparent to me that it wasn't working was when I really started to reflect on my life and realized how like broken and fragmented I was and how this sort of like superficial acting and speaking was really not satisfying at all. I was inconsistent. Okay, Brad Bursa at that time was an inconsistent little boy, afraid of being alone. I was not authentically myself. I was afraid to be myself. The words I was using were intimately connected to my brokenness and these masks I was wearing. Um, I haven't always, I haven't been that way. Okay, I'm, I'm growing and I'm learning. Okay, and it's been through encountering Christ and surrounding myself with awesome people where I really could feel like I could be myself and be loved truly. Um, tonight, tonight, as we, we have an hour left, okay, I really want to challenge all of you, challenge myself included, to, to let Christ's light shine into the words you use. Let's examine the words we're using and let that examination transform us, okay? Series of questions for you to think about. Are we living a fractured life, covered up by various masks and completely different vocabularies, each one seeking nothing other than acceptance? Do we realize what we're saying when we gossip out of jealousy? Do we realize how bad our pride sounds when we boast to others all the time about how amazing we are? Do we realize what we're really saying when we tear someone down or curse at someone and I would even add on there, curse about someone. Do we realize what we're doing when we share perverted jokes or objectify someone through words? Because when I let, when I let Christ's light shine into my life, and as I examine my speech, 
what I realize is that a lot of times I just hide behind my words. They just are part of this acting effort. Um, and I think we're called to something more than that. Now, I realize that, like, in different settings, right, you're going to talk different ways. You don't talk to your teacher the same way you talk to a friend, different levels of respect and so forth. Okay, so I understand that. I think we adapt our speech given the circumstance. But I can adapt to my speech and still be myself, authentically myself. And that's what we're called to. We're called to a consistency. We're called to a consistent life. We're called to greatness in this life. And I want to tie this into to the talk I gave last week on retreat about Lazarus coming out of the grave. Christ is calling you out of the darkness of the tomb. Whatever darkness you have in your life, he's calling you out of that darkness and into his light to walk with him, to be with him. And he's calling all of you, your whole being, your whole being. He didn't like when Lazarus was, was dead and in the tomb, he didn't say, Lazarus, let your arm come out. And Lazarus's alive arm flew out of his tomb. Right? He called all of Lazarus out. Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came out. And this is what we're doing this year, is allowing Christ's light to shine into all areas of our lives, our hearts, our minds, our words, our bodies. And he's calling us out. All right. Tonight, let's examine our words. Words are profound. They really mean something. And they really reveal a lot to us about our lives and our flesh. Um, with that being said...